Good evening. We'll call the meeting to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I invite you to join us. Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call, please. Gary? Here. Grinberg? Here. Pepcorn? Here. Strand? Here. Mahoney? Here. Different departments have different uh, issues going on. Uh, Terry Orr, uh, WIC nutritionist at the Fargo Cass Public Health, has been certified as a lactation consultant. The certification is recognition that an individual has met the eligibility requirements and passed an exam that assesses knowledge in breastfeeding management. And the library, the library's winter readathon starts Monday, January 8th, and runs through Sunday, March 4th. Readers of all ages are invited to earn their prizes by reading. This year's theme is Make Reading Your Winter Sport. Police, the police department are now occupying the former Border States Electric Building, which was remodeled to create a locker room, supervisor workspaces and offices, a report writing room, a briefing room, meeting rooms, a gym, and indoor parking for the squad cars. So when the policemen go out in the morning to go to work, their cars are nice and warm. And Commissioner Gehrig tells me that I'll give another year of life for our cars so we won't have to buy as many. So. The field services division has moved in and is planning for investigations and administrative divisions is now in motion and they'll move to the new building that occur possibly in the first two quarters of 2019. On time, right? And the guys are liking it, right? Yeah. With the cold temperatures and growing populations in need of help, we recognize that the Church is United and the partnering programs are doing a great job of trying to keep up with the needs. The City of Fargo staff and funds the Gladys Ray Shelter and partners with the Beyond Shelter and with the Fargo Housing Authority along with social service funds to aid the community-wide goal to end homelessness. Commissioner Strand has been working with them this last week as well because we have somewhat of an emergency with the cold weather coming in for many of our homeless people. We recognize there are times throughout the year when additional assistance is essential, especially of late due to extreme cold temperatures. On behalf of all the sheltering programs in the community, the City of Fargo would like to see what additional resources could be provided for this additional need, whether it's in donations to Churches United or physical sheltering spaces. We are very grateful to the sheltering church program offered the past six years and realize there remains a greater community need that requires additional support. The City of Fargo, along with the Community Development Area with Commissioner Strand, will be working through this uh, as this, this month goes on, basically, right, John? Uh, and to try to work with the team members involved with this to come up with some answers to this long-term problem. So uh, you may have us reaching out for that, and right now if the public wants to know what would help, donations would very much help to make this go through. Is there a motion to approve the order of agenda making a correction in item 14 so that it reads improvement district BR18B1, not project BR18C1? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is second. there a second? Kenberg? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Motion carried. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the December 18th, 2017 regular meeting? I so move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carried. Is there a motion to approve consent agenda items 1 through 18? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Grinberg? Aye. Gary? Yes. Pepcorn? Aye. Strand? Yes. Mahoney? Aye. We'll go to the regular agenda. Resolutions prescribing rates and charges for water and wastewater utility services for 2018. Expla explanation by Utility Director Jim Hussauer. Jim, you ready? Or well, you're going to have help as well. Yep, Roy and I. Um, good evening, Mayor Commissioner. Um, just want to tell you, you know, when we make recommendations for utility rate uh, increases, it's essentially based on our revenue adequacy model, and this revenue adequacy model includes new revenue, uh, expected new revenue, um, expenses, and in, uh, expected expenses as well, too. There's also, we look at reserve balances and our 20-year CIP. So we put all these together into our revenue adequacy model, and essentially there will be recommended years when we come up with a small percentage or kind of modest increases for our water and wastewater rates. And essentially in 2018, we're looking at doing that as well for at 3% for both water and wastewater, so. Want to come into that? 
Okay. Um, no, I, I think uh, uh, Jim kind of spelled it out, but um, yeah, I think uh, with the with the water rates, uh, three percent increase. What that amounts to is about uh, ninety six cents a month for the average homeowner, and uh, you know about eleven dollars and fifty cents a year. So, and again, just like. Jim said it's a, it's a 20 year uh, plan, so we're looking not just at 18, we're looking at uh, the long term, so. And that's with the tax that we have for infrastructure as well that has wastewater water in it as well? Correct. Okay. Commissioner Pipcorn. Yep, Mr. Chairman, so Jim, I have a question for you. So it's 3%, and so when was the last time we had an increase? Um, the last time we actually had a change in rates was in 2014. We actually reduced it 16% from $19 down to 16, and we haven't increased it since. In, in fact, right now as we're speaking, um, our rates are still lower than what they were in 2006 on the wastewater side. Okay, and, so, and I guess I'm a, I'm a supporter of having gradual rates instead of long pauses and then huge jumps in rates, so I think that's a good thing. And, and then can you talk a little bit about West Fargo? Are, how are their rates... Uh, compared to the city of Fargo residence rates? Uh, the Fargo residence rates, it's a flat rate of $16 per household. We're going to charge West Fargo, Fargo volumetrically. So there will be a meter to where we essentially charge them $3 per thousand that they send us, and how they charge their residents would be their, their issue then. So so that so then the, the city of West Fargo determines what they charge. They just pay us a bulk rate. Is that how you would? Yes. So that's okay. Thank you. I didn't realize that. So thank you very much. Commissioner yeah. So I'm the commissioner, I'm the liaison commissioner for the utilities, and these guys do a great job, and, uh, you know, rates are relatively low. What we're t basically telling people uh, is that, you know, if we invest more in, in our utilities and ex become a regional provider for, the, for other folks, that it's a great deal for us, which it is, which is why I think instead of having increases, we should be seeing decreases. We're investing a lot in this. We're taking in a lot more customers. We're making a lot more money. And in my, in my brain... Uh, we are raising rates to supplement the general fund, not to uh, up, you know, keep our, our utilities up. Uh, we may, we take, make enough money as, as a utility to run our operations. What most people don't know is we take 20% and we give that revenue to the general fund, and that's how we fund a portion of it. So that's a lot of dollars that's coming out of the utility. In my, in my mind, that's why we're raising rates, uh, not to prop these guys up. Uh, so I'll be voting no like I did with the uh, budget uh, uh, this last, uh, last time. And I swear I'm going to keep my, my vote consistent. Any other discussion? So part of what the public needs to know is by state law, we can take up a 20% out of the utilities, and that's very common throughout the state. What you guys have is a long-term uh, planning of what we need to, to fund over the course of our water and wastewater. that has been well thought out over 20 years. We've been doing it well. And we also I still have one of the lowest utility rates in the state. Is that correct? Very much so, yes. Okay. Do I have a motion? Or I'll Grinberg? make the motion, to, and then I have a comment. Is there a second? Motion to approve. I'll second. Okay. Um, Commissioner Grinberg. I would just put note that when we get into our budgeting process here in a few months, that that um, we have maybe a presentation from Mr. Grubb um, on the overall revenue, um, the fees, um, with uh, what we're adding here as we look um, part of the 19 budget, so that we're you know, making note of, you know, the increased revenue from becoming a regional center and how that impacts our budgeting process to um, maybe rely less on the mill levy and more on fees. So I would, you can let me know, Bruce, and let us know what's the best month for that, but may, I'm thinking May. Well, as in this budget this year, we did have the utilities and how they were doing this and why we were doing it, so it was included in the 18, so we do it next year as well. Any other comments? Roll call vote, please. Greenberg? Aye. Pepcorn? Aye. Gary? No. Strand? Yes. Mahoney? Aye. So we'll have to go to... Do we have something that's not public, Eric? 21. 21, mm -hmm. if that's... Oh, okay. You have my recommendations for the appointments and reappointments to the following boards and commissions. City Hall Auditorium Commission, Human Relations Commission, and Renaissance Zone Authority. You have my recommendations. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Want to talk about them for five minutes? No. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call, please. Strand? Yes. Grinberg? Aye. Gary? Yes. Pepcorn? Aye. Mahoney? Aye. I have, um, I have an item to fill. Commissioner Grinberg. Um, 
You may recall was it our prior commission meeting or maybe a month ago, uh, our discussion on the Jesse Craig project um, <coughs> and the tax exempt policy, I made a comment that, at least from my perspective, um, we needed to be somewhat consistent in our delivery of the policy. And I made reference at that meeting that um, perhaps our policy should reflect the two-year cycle of when new commissioners are seated. And um, so I spoke with Eric Johnson this afternoon, and I'd like him to put some thought after discussion tonight to come back with whether it's a procedure or a policy for the commission to um, consider that, in essence, would uh, every even-numbered year with the city's um, process, procedures, state statute of approving its budget would also piggyback the tax exempt review policy with the same timeline so that when the budget in an even numbered year, so in 2018 in this circumstance, um, we pass the final budget, there would be a process to review the tax exempt review committee and the policy during the same time frame so that new commissioners that would have their opinions on that and once it's voted on, would stand for two years until the next commission is seated. And um, I would like Eric to maybe comment on that and figure out, provide, um, you know, what would be required for any action um, on behalf of the commission, but to have some kind of uh, s stability, predictability around the policy, um, at least from a, from a. So your idea is that the policy would stand for two years and then it could be reviewed again, but at least for developers in the, in, that come to the city, they would know for two years that'd be real close to the Commissioner Pipcorn, would that be a problem for tax exempt? Not at all, but I, I, the word of caution I would say is that the, that the review that we took took several years. I mean, it's, uh, if, you, if you review it every two years, then you're basically, it's going to be under review all the time, and I don't know if that's a good thing either, but you can do that. I get Tony's point that the new members want to have influence, but if you recall, the review, it, 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 it takes it a long time. It took seven months. So, yeah. and do, you, do you get what I'm saying? And so if you don't, anyway, but I, get, I, I agree with you, but I just think you have to be careful, otherwise we're going to be constantly doing that. So that's just my, but on the flip side, I will say my personal experience with apartment costs in downtown Fargo, we need to change them because the, the, the apartments in downtown Fargo are, no, are no, it's, we don't need to subsidize them. They're, they're charging more in downtown than they were before. So why, are, why would we subsidize something that they're, that we need to stop that. So I, I, that's, my, that's my opinion, but we, there are changes, but we can do it at any time. <coughs> so that's my, that's my two cents. Thank you. Mr. Strand. I, I, I initially, I, I wasn't expecting this topic, but <laughs> being as we're here, uh, <laughs> and it's on our, on our discussion front, uh, it's, it's not going away. This issue of affordability uh, as it <coughs> connects to um, public support of projects isn't going away, and I'm okay with us being proactive about it. I, I don't want to presuppose, though, that uh, a commissioner's individual voice is squelched or chilled by a sense that they're obligated to follow policies if, in their judgment, that's not what they're able to discern to do. You know, so, we're, but uh, the process is okay and the conversation is okay and exploring ways to do this is, is fine. And just to comment on Commissioner Strand's point, the, the goal isn't to provide influence on an, on an individual vote. It's to say, here's the policy. You can, you can vote any way you want. Exactly. It's just, here's the policy for the two-year cycle. Okay, so we'll go to public hearings. Item 20, hearing on a dangerous building located at 1011 Fifth Avenue South, proposed fact of finding and order and notice to the property owner in regard to dangerous building at 1011 Fifth Avenue South. Bruce Tharlson to explain. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, we have two actions on the hearing today. The first one you're gonna notice is, uh, was brought up last <coughs> commission meeting. It's for 1011 Fifth Avenue South. It's up again due to uh, us required to be posting a notice of our city attorney action for the order to show cause. We've since done the posting. Um, we have received some new email indications of an owner that might be interested in purchasing this property. Uh, they have implied to us that they'd like to take it down themselves, so we'd like to go along with that. So we posted it, we have a new uh, motion that allows time required for the city attorney 
action that we just taken. And you have a suggested motion in front of you. Is there anyone present who wishes to address city commission regarding this building? Is there anyone present who wishes to speak? If not, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, can I have a motion? I'll make the suggested motion. I won't read it unless you want me to, but it's, it's in front of us. That'd be fine. Is there a second? Second. Any additional discussion? Roll call vote, please. Pepcorn? Aye. Grinberg? Aye. Strand? Yes. Gary? Yes. Mahoney? Aye. Item B, hearing on a dangerous building located at 1410 First Avenue South, <coughs> proposed finding of fact and order and notice to property owner regarding dangerous building at 1410 First Avenue South. Bruce Tharlson to explain. And so we've taken the same action on this property. This is the hearing to establish that 1410 First Avenue South is a dangerous building per the Article 2104 of the Fargo Municipal Code. This hearing is required per ordinance and the proposal of allowing any interested parties to opportunity to comment and to allow the owner time to speak and show reason why the city should not cause removal of this building. Um, I indicated the actions that the inspections department has taken. We have followed up with the city attorney's uh, order to show cause, posted that. Um, included in your packets are photos and our dangerous building ordinance. All the city attorney's actions are in the packet. Um, we received the assessor's letter. It states that the repairs will exceed the 50% of the required value for this property. Um, so we've taken the path of demolition due to the amount of repair required. The other things that have been going on with this property, the police department has called us. There's been uh, vagrants breaking into the property, people living in this building. So we've had to go board this up, use city expenses to do that. So we've taken a severe stance on this property to, and a quick timeline. Um, there is no owner that we know of on this property. The banks have kind of relinquished ownership and a couple different people that claim to have authority over the building have called and that has changed hands even in this property, in this uh, action. So, did you want me to go through the timeline for the property? Oh, you're fine. Okay. Is there anyone present who wishes to talk to the city commission regarding this building? Does anybody present who wishes to speak? If not, we'll close public hearing. Can I have a motion? Move for approval. Is there yeah. a second? Chairman, one thing I just noticed, sort of a little glitch in the packet, the cover, the suggested motion on the previous one <coughs> inadvertently has the same address as in this one. So, uh, that may be... I could just ask if the record could reflect that the prior motion was as we were discussing on the Fifth Avenue South property, yep. not the 1410 First Avenue South. This is the 1410 First Avenue South. So property. I make the motion with that correction. Yeah. Yep. Shall we? A second. You can just reflect that in the minutes without having to vote again. Yeah. Is that okay? Okay. Well, I mean, you can vote on it. But let's re -vote. let's revote the first one. Okay. Proper proper area. Pepcorn. Aye. Greenberg. Aye. Strand? Yes. Gary? Yes. Mahoney? Aye. Now I have a motion on this one, but I don't have a second. 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 And Commissioner Gary, you want to talk? So no bank even owns this one, is what you said? There have been representatives of banks come to us about the property, and but nobody wants to take possession or I would imagine not. Qualified. Somebody money, and who's that going to be then? Yeah. It's going to end up that uh, on this one, it, unless somebody comes out of the woodwork, we're going to end up uh, go following through with demolition. We've given a time frame of a month and a half on this one to see if we can get anybody to come out of the woodwork and work with us on the building. Otherwise, the cost of demolition gets assessed against the property. Mm -hmm. If there's no one there to pay the taxes, it, it kind of gets lumped in with the unpaid taxes, and in the end, it gets forfeited <coughs> to the county. The county turns around typically and quit claims it to the city after forfeiture. And we inherit at least a lot, and we can turn around and perhaps recoup our costs from uh, sale of a lot uh, at a future date. Mr. Strand. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Tarleton, I, I, from the perspective of a community development chair, the notion that we're, all, we're having more action now on some of these properties than we've maybe had for a while, mm -hmm. and, and my sense is the folks I work with would thank you for that, that code enforcement inspections is just a critical key component to keeping neighborhoods safe and, and viable. 
and to not let any part of a neighborhood start deteriorating and to the disadvantage of their neighbors. So, so thank you for that. That's my, my, my sense of what they'd want me to say to you is keep that ball rolling for their sake. Any other discussion? Roll call vote. I was just going to, John took the words out of my mouth. Um, so, you know, spot on. And kudos to Mr. Tarlson for his professionalism, his leadership, his respect for the city ordinances, mm -hmm. and respect for private property and um, changing the game. Mm -hmm. um, because neighborhoods are noticing um, that we stepped up our, our effort in a fair way. And um, thank you. I'll tell staff too. Thanks. Roll call vote. Greenberg? Aye. Gehrig? Yes. Pepcorn? Aye. Strand? Yes. Mahoney? Aye. C, transfer an FA alcoholic beverage license from Lone Star Steakhouse, doing business as Lone Star Steakhouse, to 1545 University Drive South to uh, Clink uh, at Luna Coffee. Steve Sprague to explain. If you'll recall, um, back in June, um, we had um, a representative from, um, it was uh, David Sloshman from a, a, you know, a realtor's perspective trying to uh, broker a deal with this, with this license and move it. And we, he wanted to transfer it to himself and, and then tr try to find somebody. And we said, no, we're not going to do that, but we'll give you a few months to, to try to find somebody that maybe would be interested in this license. And he's come forward with uh, uh, Luna Coffee that was interested in kind of upgrading their license. They currently had an I license, which allowed them to serve beer and wine. With the FA license, they'll now be able to serve alcohol also. Um, otherwise, they're, she's not planning on any changes to the size or the like, the menus or any of that type of stuff. Um, so we've done our background check, and it does come to you with a recommendation of approval. I don't know if you have any questions. Does anybody wish to address City Commission regarding this transfer? Is anybody wishing to speak to this transfer? Close public hearings. Can I have a motion? I will move to approve. Second. second. Well, that was close. Close. Gary would be the second on that, Shelley. Any further discussion? Uh, real quick, I just wanted to give insight on the discussion we had at Liquor Control. An FA license is basically a restaurant license, you know, <coughs> like anywhere you would think of, like it has a full bar, uh, and then 50% is food, right? Correct. Uh, so the, they're not capped in any way. Uh, and my question to the to the folks was, why are we allowing transfers of this license? Uh, then, if it's not capped, basically we're we're creating a secondary market where you know you can sell it, make money off of it, or whatever you want to do at that point. There was a resolution of that at the meeting. Maybe you could explain to the to the commissioners yep. what happened with that. Sure. In June of 2014, uh, Eric wrote an ordinance that that essentially capped all licenses, new licenses issued, or not? Excuse me, not capped, but made it so they're non-transferable. Um, unless the business is selling it, so it's a continuation of the business and, and then the license going with it. If somebody closes up shop and then wants to try to transfer the license and that license was originally issued after June of 2014, it comes back to the city and so that it's, it closes that loop. So this is one before the loop. This was, this was a very old one, uh, okay. 30 years old, yeah. And this is so they can serve hard liquor? Is that, they already serve wine and beer there. Correct, and she'll be able to do mixed drinks, that type of thing now, so. Okay, ready to vote? Roll call vote, please. Pepcorn? Aye. Gary? Yes. Strand? Yes. Grinberg? Aye. Mahoney? Aye. Item D, application by KLP Lodging, doing business in American Inn, Fargo, for Class ABH Limited Alcoholic Beverage License at 4325 23rd Avenue South. Steve Sprague to explain as well. So this license allows them to do the manager special. There's a limited time in the day from four to eight that they can um, give away the alcohol to their hotel guests. Uh, in their application, they said that they would do that manager special on a Monday through Thursday basis, not over the weekends. It also, we, we um, made a change to the ordinance a couple years ago. There's a, a kind of a change in the industry a little bit where we wanted to be reflective of that. And they have, they have uh, an off sale to their guests to allow them to bring uh, a beer or wine back to their room. Um, and then that beer then has to be sold like through a, a sundry shop or you know, have, have uh, control over it by the hotel staff. Um, and so those are the two things that they'd be allowed to do with this. Um, and again, we've gone through the background check and there was some concern over the manager on this one. Um, and uh, he had a couple of DUIs uh, in uh, more recent history. Um, 
managers tend to change in this industry. And so rather than uh, punishing the owners of the business, we, we tend to issue the license uh, knowing that it's the owners that are at risk with the license. And so it'll be up to them to kind of watch the manager and make sure that things uh, stay as they should. Is there anyone present wishes to speak, City Commission, regarding this application? Or is there anyone who wishes to speak? If not, we'll close it. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Grinberg? Aye. Pepcorn? Aye. Strand? Yes. Gary? Yes. Mahoney? Aye. Application filed by Hornbachers doing business as Hornbachers Wine and Spirits for a Class B limited alcoholic beverage license at 4101 13th Avenue South. Steve Sprague to explain. So the city has uh, two of the B limiteds available. Um, Hornbacher stepped up to get this one and put it in. Um, not exactly where the Village West was. Uh, they're actually a little bit farther to the uh, east. Uh, in still in that strip mall, but uh, but a different location. Uh, one of the rules that we have is that uh, any um, off sale be a hundred feet from a grocery store, and and this uh, new location does meet that requirement. So there were no issues with the background check. Does anyone wishes to speak, City Commission, regarding this application? Is there anyone who wishes to speak? If not, close public hearing. Can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. Second. Mr. Pepcorn and Greenberg. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Pepcorn? Aye. Grinberg? Aye. Strand? Yes. Gary? Yes. Mahoney? Aye. Item F. Is there a motion to withdraw the vacation application? So move. Make the motion for FNG. Second. Move. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Grinberg? Aye. Gary? Yes. Strand? Yes. Pepcorn? Aye. Mahoney? Aye. Item G, another withdrawal, dedication plot of 2nd Street North portions of North Dakota R1 Urban Renewal Edition, Kenny and DeVette's second edition and portions vacated 2nd Street North. It's on your agenda. Uh, they also would like to withdraw the, the uh, dedication plot. Is there a motion? That Aye. motion covered both. Covered both? Yep. We're good to go. Okay. Zoning change to repeal and establish conditional overlay on lots two through six, block one, Blue Water Creek edition, blocks one to three, block one, Blue Water Creek second edition, block two, or lot two, block one, Bentley Square edition, and um, the different numbers with uh, approval recommended by Planning Commission on 12 5 17. And it's the first reading of the rezoning. Don Crest to explain with his new Christmas sweater. Thank you, Commissioners. Actually, it's an old Christmas sweater, but I keep, uh, I keep it going. So, uh, good evening, Commissioners. Donald Kress from the Planning and Development Department. Happy New Year. Uh, I'll be presenting the next six items. All of these items include a new or amended ordinance. These new or amended ordinances prepared by the City Attorney's Office are included in your packet along with the materials for each case. As the Mayor has stated, item 20H is a zoning change to repeal and reestablish a conditional overlay in the Blue Water Creek area as shown on the map. The current conditional overlay, Ordinance 4900, was established in 2013. Changes proposed to the conditional overlay are stated in your staff report and shown on the screen. These changes are intended to provide more flexibility in the design of the buildings on the sites in this development while still keeping the design intent of the original conditional overlay. Many of the properties along 32nd Avenue South and 45th Street South are either constructed or under construction. And Mr. Volmuth provided us with this graphic that shows uh, which are already developed and which are uh, under construction. The applicant has confirmed that the previously approved projects within this development will not be affected by the changes to the conditional overlay. Planning staff has received no public comment regarding this project. The applicant, Nate Volmuth, is with us this evening and may wish to address the commission. The Planning Commission's recommendation for approval is stated in your staff report and shown on the screen. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you, Commissioners. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak regarding this rezoning? Is anybody wishes to speak? If not, we'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. <coughs> Greenberg, hearing. Uh, any discussion? Roll call vote, Charlie. Greenberg? Aye. Gary? Yes. Strand? Yes. Pepcorn? Aye. Mahoney? Aye. Item I. Zoning change to repeal and reestablish conditional overlay within the boundaries of the District of Fargo, third edition, 3751 53rd Avenue South. Approval recommended by Planning Commission on 1117. And this is the first reading of the rezoning ordinance, and it's a plat of the District of Fargo, third plat, third edition, I'm sorry. 
Don Crest to explain as well. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, you'll recognize this area as north of the uh, Walmart there down 52nd Avenue. This is called the District of Fargo 3rd Edition. There are actually two separate entitlements. We'll have two separate votes on them. Um, item 20I1 is the repeal and reestablishment of an existing condition overlay for the area of this project site and, can, and cover that whole area. The property is zoned LC, limited commercial. No change to the zoning is proposed, only to the conditional overlay. The current conditional overlay, Ordinance 4634, was established in 2007 when the District of Fargo Edition was originally platted. Changes proposed to the conditional overlay are stated in your staff report. Five of these changes are in areas of building and site design, which would be building exterior materials, architectural features, rooftop screening, building entrances, and building perimeter and pad site foundations. These changes are intended to provide more flexibility in the design of buildings on the sites in this development, while again, still keeping the design intent of the original conditional overlay. The sixth change uh, deals with signage. The modification to the signage regulations will allow a shorter pylon sign on the individual properties than the original CO did, but will then provide an option of having one 60 foot high pylon sign to be shared with all three proposed businesses on this property. This change will allow those businesses to have the opportunity for visibility from Interstate 29 while keeping the uh, uh, intent of the original CO is to not have a forest of signs as is so common at interstate um, intersections uh, that, that will we'll just have the one. So it was a trade-off uh, negotiation with the applicant. The applicant, Alyssa Novotny Leno from Royce Development, is with us this evening and may wish to address the commission. The Planning Commission's recommendation for approval is stated in your staff report and shown on the screen. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you, commissioners. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak to the zoning change and reestablish and conditional overlay? Anyone present wishes to speak? Hearing none, close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. G and G. Roll call vote. Greenberg? Aye. Gary? Yes. Strand? Yes. Pepcorn? Aye. Mahoney? Aye. And then Adam J, amendment oh, to the P. We, uh, we have to go do it number two, sir. Pardon? There's, there's, um, there's a, an item two there, too, that's the plat. Two number two? Yeah. Plat? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, thank you, sir. So uh, this is the plat of that area. This is a minor plat, which normally would not be before your commission, but this plat has a um, subdivision waiver for waiver of sidewalk. So it's before your commission. Um, again, this property is zoned LC. It's the same property was in the last. Um, the last entitlement here, this shows the plat proposing three lots. Uh, this plat has been reviewed by uh, city staff and is um, up here this evening ready for your signature. Here's the sidewalk waiver as you see here, commissioners. Um, there's normally our ordinance would require, our land development code would require that si uh, sidewalk be improved along the entire property frontage. There's a sidewalk that ends about here, which looks like that. There's another view of that. And uh, there would be no purpose in extending this, the full length of the property frontage, because it runs into the interstate right of way. It's that there's no connectivity or, or future for it. Additionally, 53rd uh, Avenue there, or 53rd Avenue, as you see, is a public street, but it turns eventually into the Walmart loading dock, which would not be an area for pedestrians. So we uh, plan to, the proposal is to just, wait, two, hang on here, one more is to waive that red section of sidewalk and just have the developer add that blue section of sidewalk as depicted in the graphic that's on the screen and in your staff report. This is what that looks like on the long shot and there's the Walmart piece across the, uh, across the street that they'll connect with. And again, that extension of the sidewalk would serve no purpose of connectivity or accessibility and so staff would uh, support the waiver of that. The Planning Commission's recommendation for both the plat and the sidewalk waiver is stated in your staff report and shown on the screen. The project applicant, Alyssa Novotny Leno from Roy's Development, is with us this evening. And that concludes staff's presentation. Thank is there anyone present who wants to speak to this plat change? Anybody present who wishes to speak? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Second. Grinberg. Second. Mr. Gary. Mr. Strand. Thank you, Mary. Mr. Chris, I'm just curious about. Yes, sir. I'm asking this so I can learn. Yes, sir. Um, typically, I think of a public property as being the berm on the other side of a sidewalk toward the street. So, right. you know, but when there's no sidewalk, 
and and this isn't public anyway across the sidewalk, is it? Well, let me back let me back up here, sir. Let's see here. So that's where the sidewalk ends, right there. Yep. And then there would be that'd be put in the public right of way, though. That would be yeah. on the other side of this whole area would be. The reason I'm asking yes, this sir. is when anybody runs for office, that's where they go and scramble to place all their signs. Mm -hmm. Is there any impact on, or, or other people advertising, promoting, and marketing, and you can't place your adver advertisements on the berm? Does this affect, is there any impact? I don't believe so, sir, be on this? because the area in between the sidewalk and the street is still going to be there. But it's how about beyond where there's no sidewalk, then? Okay, well, that, you're looking down, so this is where the sidewalk would go uh, a, little, a little in front of the, uh, the car there, and then there would just be no sidewalk further down there. Again, there's an area of right away. It wouldn't be demar readily demarcated by a sidewalk, if that's what you're saying. If it's there. Um, but, uh, you know, they're, yeah, yeah, stay close to the street, I guess, would be the, uh, the recommendation. John, are you trying to find any places to put signs, or what? Well, I've just learned by <laughs> doing, for office. like on 32nd Avenue by J.L. Beers, there's another area where there's a whole stretch without a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And, and you'll, you'll just see some folks encroaching on, there's no yeah. easy understanding of the, what's public or what's private. The sidewalk provides that demarcation, sir, is that what you Unless saying? there's no sidewalk. Yes, sir. Um, Eric, do you want to look into that for us? Do we know where we put it's, signs? Well, yeah, well I, I think it's you call attention thing. to the fact that it's, we just use the sidewalk as a kind of clean line. Where there's no sidewalk, there's no clean line. Doesn't, you know, the, the right of way is what the right of way is, and the average passerby won't know where the boundary is. That's true. Um, you know, I, in, in this case, there's, I think there's you can no passerbys except truckers from out of state yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. who don't vote here. As a practical matter, I think you can assume if you, if you get your campaign sign a ways away from the curb, you're probably fine. Yeah, Commissioner, since this is a pretty much a straight shot, you could uh, probably line up on the existing sidewalk and eyeball it a little bit there and probably be all right. Uh, and, I, and I guess my question is about the ownership of the property and the right yes. of way and who owns the rights to the right of way. Yes. And it's, that doesn't change with or without a sidewalk. Yes, sir, that's correct. The right of way is still there. There's just no sidewalk in it. That's correct, sir. So now you three candidates this next year have some more information. <laughs> <laughs> Thank we'll, you. We'll let the realtors know, too. Yeah. Roll call vote, yeah. please. Greenberg? Aye. Gary? Yes. Pepcorn? Aye. Strand? Yes. Mahoney? Aye. I can go to Jay now, Don? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good. Amendment to the plan unit development master plan use of lots 17, 18, and portion of lots 1, 2, block 4 of Harwood's addition, 703, 707, 10th Street North. <coughs> Approval recommended by the Planning Commission on 12, 5, 17. It's the first reading of the ordinance. Don Crest to explain. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is the 710 Lofts project on 10th Street North. There are three properties involved here. Here's 7th Avenue North and 10th Street North. You may recall this project, which your commissioner approved on March 2nd, 2015. The applicant wishes to include an additional property in the existing planned unit development. So this property with the uh, multi-dwelling building on it and this property here were in the original uh, PUD. And then he wants to amend the PUD to add this property here. Um, and then he would have to amend the master land use plan to do this. The underlying zoning is MR3, multi-dwelling residential. The addition of this lot will allow the applicant to provide additional parking by reconfiguring the parking on the project site. And here's the applicant's site plan as to what he proposes to do. The landscape buffering and opaque fence screening will be required along the perimeter of the added lot on the south and southern, western, and eastern boundaries. Uh, note that the modification of the PUD does not change the number of units allowed and no change to the actual multi-dwelling building is proposed. So all we're doing is adding one more lot to the existing planned unit development to allow some additional parking. The project applicant, Kevin Bartram, is with us tonight and may wish to address the commission. The Planning Commission's recommendation for approval is stated in your staff report and shown on the screen. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you, commissioners. Does anyone present wish to speak to this amendment? Anyone present wishes to speak? If not, we'll close public hearing. Do I have a motion? Move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I have a question. Mr. Greg. If I recall, this had an incentive on it. If they're adding property, does it increase the incentive? Commissioner, I do not know the answer to that question. I'll defer that to Ms. Crutchfield. Or Mr. Oh, Mr. Gilmore is behind me, sorry.
Uh, no, it doesn't. This is a TIF district and the adding of this parking would not expand the district or really affect the incentive at all. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Grinberg? Aye. Pepcorn? Aye. Strand? Yes. Gary? Yes. Mahoney? Aye. Item K, tax amendment to amend section 20-0402-R. 1B to the Fargo Municipal Code, Land Development Code, relating to the screening of outdoor storage areas, approval recommended by the City Planning Commission. First reading of the ordinance, Donald Crest to explain. Yes, sir. So again, as the mayor stated, this is a modification to the uh, screening relating to industrial storage areas within the GC, the general commercial zone that are allowed by conditional use permit, which is a provision of our LDC that that's allowed. The amendment allows more options for required screening of outdoor areas. It does not reduce the requirement for screening. The applicant's re representative, Alyssa Novotny Leno, is with us tonight uh, again and uh, may wish to address the commission. The Planning Commission's recommendation is stated on this in your staff report, shown on the screen. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you, Commissioners. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak this amendment? Is anyone wishing to speak? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? So moved. Grinberg for a motion. Second? Second. Changing it up here, huh? <laughs> you know whose Getting portfolio is the busiest. <laughs> Roll call. <laughs> <laughs> Grinberg? Aye. Pepcorn? Aye. Strand? Yes. Gary? Yes. Mahoney? Aye. So when, I, when I was um, indoctrinated to the Planning Commission and the whole role of planning by the staff, one of the, when I asked the question, you know, what are some of my responsibilities? Make motions. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to consume all the agenda tonight? <laughs> Item L, zoning change from MR, multi-dwelling residential to limited commercial conditional overlay on lot 29 of Omer's edition, subdivision of lot 65 through 68, approval recommended by planning commission on 12-5, first reading of the rezoning ordinance, Donald Crest. Commissioners, the next uh, items, L and M, relate to adjacent properties here on 12th Street North. This is University Drive, NDSU here. This is the University Lutheran Center. They revolve around these two lots that are two parking lots. Here you're on 12th Street, you're looking west. Um, this is the Lutheran Center parking lot, which is paved. This is the Alpha Gamma Row parking lot, which is uh, item L here we'll be talking about first. Um, this is a proposal by the Alpha Gamma Row House they actually are kitty corner over here, to uh, rezone this property to limited commercial. Uh, this parking lot is not contiguous to the Alpha Gamma Row property, so it can't have the same zoning as that property. It's remote from it. It's a couple, it's about a 55 yards away there. Um, the Alpha Gamma Row intends to use this property as parking for their residents. Uh, the proposed limited commercial zoning is the least intense zoning available on this property that will allow a freestanding parking lot, which is known in the LDC as commercial parking. The conditional overlay that will apply to this will restrict the use on this lot to commercial parking lot use only. Any request to change this uh, use on the property would be an amendment to the conditional overlay, just as the two you have seen here tonight, and would have to be heard by the Planning Commission or your commission, because we are, of course, there's a residential area here uh, adjacent to the property and over here. So that was our restriction to make sure that no uh, surprise uses showed up on that property in the future. The project applicant, Eric Miller, is with us tonight and may wish to address the commission. Public comment is included in the packet for your review. Planning Commission's recommendation for approval is stated in your staff report and shown on the screen. This concludes staff's presentation, Commissioner. So anyone present wishes to speak to this change? Anybody present wishes to speak? We'll close public hearing. Do I have a motion? See if you're <laughs> so moved. Is there a second? Second. Changing it up. Uh, this is just real, just giving parking spaces. Yes, sir. This is just for that, that lot at uh, 1314 12th Street North. Allow, zoning it to limited commercial will allow them to pave it. The applicant has provided a, uh, a site plan where he's going to pave it and landscape it and improve it because it's just a dirt lot now. Okay. So it will be part of their overall parking plan. Can they tailgate on it or no? I don't believe there's uh, regulations regarding tailgating in the LC zone, sir. <laughs> Any other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Greenberg? Aye. Pepcorn? Aye. Strand? Yes. Gary? Yes. Mahoney? Aye. I believe they do stage their float there for the homecoming parade, though, so it uh, oh, good. serves at that use as well, sir. 
Donald, we're to item M, and you have consumed a lot of the agenda but tonight, but we're still going to finish within an hour, unless wow. this is controversial. Zoning change in MR, multi-dwelling residential, to public and institutional, condition overland, lot 30, Omar's edition, subdivision lots 65 through 68, approval recommended by planning, first evidence of rezoning ordinance. Thank you, sir. So this is the adjacent parking lot that we saw in the photograph here. This property here is the University Lutheran Center, and they own this parking lot, which is currently developed and paved and striped and used for their use. Uh, the Lutheran Center, uh, in contrast to the property we talked about with Alpha Gamma Rho a few moments ago, this property is, as you see, adjacent to the Lutheran Center. The Lutheran Center is zoned PI, Public Institutional, and so this property, which they also own, can also be zoned that it's a it's considered a unified development under the same ownership and the PI zone also allows commercial parking so this apparently this uh, parking lot has been there for some time and we're just it's zoned MR3 now we're changing it to PI to make it conforming the conditional overlay here will restrict the use on this lot to religious institution and commercial parking and again any request to change that would become before the Planning Commission and your Commission uh, as the previous one and again mr. Miller is representing this property as well as with us tonight. The uh, Planning Commission's recommendation is before you on the screen and, and in your staff report. That concludes staff's presentation. Thank you, Commissioners. Is there any president who wishes to speak to this zoning change? Anybody present who wishes to speak? Close public hearing. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Greenberg? No. I mean, yep. yes. <laughs> Keep them on the record. That's, that's on the record. Pepcorn. Aye. Strand. Yes. Gary. Yes. Mahoney. He was confused. Thank you, Commissioners. So Sam Houston, the mayor of Sam Houston's uh, community, is going to be wearing the Bison jersey tomorrow night at his commission meeting because he lost a bet. Uh, there will be a further bet with the uh, Madison game coming up as well. So we will see how we fare there as well. Commissioner Pipcorn tonight is just going to reveal his prediction of how this game is going to go. 35-14, Bison. Very you, good. Can I ask you what the bet is with the mayor of James Madison? James Madison, Greg, are we doing jerseys or bison? I think jerseys and meat. Meat and, and jerseys. Oh, awesome. What kind of meat they have? Huh? What kind of meat do they have? Deep? I don't know what they have out east. <laughs> <laughs> it may be seafood. <laughs> Any other discussions? Don't you want anything else you want to bring up that has stirs controversy? Is there a motion to adjourn? No moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.